All right, hello. Uh, I don't get a chance to do this very often, so I got to start with, hi, mom. Hope you're watching. So I am Richard. I am Patrick. Uh, we are, of course, cool guys, uh, but we are also students. We are front-end developers. And uh, yeah, we come from a school called Hyper Island, like he said. Uh, and for those of you who don't know Hyper Island, we have a small intro vid, so enjoy. Go bananas, be a m a m a s. Go bananas, be a m a m a s. Go bananas, be a m a m a s. Go bananas, be a m a m a m a s. Go bananas, be a m a m a m a s. Go bananas, be a m a m a m a s. Go bananas, be a m a m a m a s. Go bananas, be a m a m a m a s. Go bananas. So obviously, Hyper Island is a school. We are a school of creative individuals, and we work in groups and in teams. We come from diverse, different backgrounds, and uh, come together and make magic. Yeah, but what makes Hyper special is to focus on the how we do things and why we do things. It's focused on the process, not on on what we do that is secondary. That you know, we believe that everyone can sort that out. It's how you're a good group member that really counts. But we're not here to talk about high problems. So, the future of communication. Whoa. That is heavy. Yeah. So, the best way to talk about the future is always to look into the past. Uh, the sucky thing about speaking at day number two of a conference is that someone might use your slides before you. But, however, they are very relevant slides, apparently. So, we begin 200 years ago, 1800. There is the local marketplace. It's fairly easy. You're the shoemaker. You're the only shoemaker in the city. You go to the square, you set up your kiosk, you put up your sign on the side, and you sell shoes. Yeah, and you're the, you're the shoe guy in the village. I mean, if someone needs shoes, they're going to they're gonna come see you and get some new shoes. But all of a sudden, some interesting things start happening. We have some newspapers, radio maybe, TV, and all this shoe guy is thinking, wow, sweet, I, I can even do less work. I just put my stuff out there. I'll get known by a wider fan base. However, this has changed. As you can see, this is a little bit out of proportion, this graph. So over 200 years, the change was relatively slow. And then we get the internet. Everyone thinks of the internet as one media outlet. But it's not. It's a blog, it's a vlog. It's social media, it's streamed content, it's gaming, it's websites, it's Twitter, it's Google+. Yeah, I mean, I mean, your website, that is one thing, but is your blog connected to your website? Is your Twitter connected to your blog? How's your Google Plus feed looking? You know, all these things just start to jumble, and it's an exponential scale that is just rocketing off, you know, more social networks are popping up than we can even count. But we can rest assured in one fact, okay? It's communication between people, right? It's people to people that are talking, or... So in 2008, the things connected to the internet outnumbered people in the world. That's a, scary, that's a scary thing, but we're not just talking mobile phones. We're not just talking laptops. No, I mean, today your shoe is connected to the internet. I mean, the shoe salesman back in the 1800s, today he might start his own community for RunKeeper instead. Nike Plus? I mean, what's going on all of a sudden? Soon we'll be talking about Fridgebook. <laughs> uh, you got it, yeah. <laughs> uh, another interesting thing. 33% chose mobile over sex for a week. Whoa. I mean, is the relationship to your phone stronger than the communication between people now? Rather play Angry Birds than the ultimate form of communication? The pure form of communication. Ooh. So, but okay, we're at least talking, you know, people and machine then, right? 
So now we're talking machine and machine. 3D printer replicated it itself, 80%. Yeah, it's called the rep wrap. It's pretty cool, actually. But you know, while we are stuck in a relationship with our smartphones, you know, the machines are getting it on. They don't want to have relationships with us anymore. But OK, OK, the future of communication. What we're trying to do here is confuse you a bit. What we want to say is, wow, we thought communication was a one-way street or a two-way street, but we're all of a sudden on a highway. You know, 10 lanes going different ways, intersecting, all these variables just popping up everywhere. The future is scary. We are part of a system. Yeah. This brings us to the futurist dilemma. Any believable prediction will be wrong. Any correct prediction will be unbelievable. Yeah, Kevin Kelly said this, really smart guy. He got it from Arthur C. Clarke, which we talked about yesterday. Uh, we didn't talk, but no. we heard about him yesterday. Awesome dude. And uh, so what we're saying is we're supposed to talk to you about the future of communication. So everything that, you, that we say that you're like, yeah, could happen, wrong. It's hard for us to even stand up here and talk about the future, because even when I say future, it's, it's, it's hard to say. Like, I can't even say now without it being in the past. Now? Gone. Now? Gone. Now? Gone. No. So we're here to teach you how to learn how to learn. We're not here to give you a fish, so to say. We're here to teach you how to fish. Yeah. So when we said that the future is scary, we want to turn that upside down. We want you to embrace the future, ever evolving, you know, maybe have some fun on the way even. So learn to learn is really essential at Hyper. Uh, it's a way that the students are able to adapt. Say that we're working in a group, okay? We get a client in, they're asking for something creative. We come up with this great idea for an app. Now, we don't have a teacher saying, you know, one, two, three, he, here are the steps for an app, and then boom, it's out there. Why? Because when we graduate, an app as we know it might not even exist anymore. If you don't believe me, we have an upcoming election in the US next year. Yeah, and that president that gets elected, by the end of that president's term, his or her iPhone will be at least 32 times as powerful as when they started. In four years. So can we really teach you how to make an app? Ugh. How can you react to this type of future? It's insane. The president doesn't even know how his iPhone's going to work in four years. How does he know how to run the country? Yeah, but okay. That's from a student's perspective. That's us at Hyper Island. But we have this awesome guy named uh, Richard St. John's who did a TED Talk, hopefully maybe a bit more from your perspective. Why do so many people reach success and then fail? Well, one of the big reasons is we think success is a one-way street. So we do everything that leads up to success, but then we get there, we figure we made it, we sit back in our comfort zone, and we actually stop doing everything that made us successful and it doesn't take long to go downhill. And I can tell you this happens, because it happened to me. Reaching success, I worked hard, I pushed myself, but then I stopped, because I figured, oh, you know, I've made it. I can just sit back and relax. Reaching success, I always tried to improve and do good work, but then I stopped, because I figured, hey, I'm good enough, I don't need to improve anymore. Reaching success, I always I was pretty good at coming up with good ideas because I did all these simple things that lead to ideas. But then I stopped because I figured I was this hotshot guy and I shouldn't have to work at ideas. They should just come like magic. And the only thing that came was create a block. I couldn't come up with any ideas. So, learn to learn how to be ever evolving, how to develop yourself, how to develop your company. Put that type of culture inside your company to be ever evolving to be adapting, to be embracing of the future. We have a five-step simple guide to hopefully <laughs> lead you on to... Only 1995. <laughs> to, yes, lead you on to the future. So we have Tweetspiration. Follow the right people. We mean with this that if you're sitting at your computer and you're wanting to do something, you're trying to figure it out, Check out your Twitter stream. You get a great idea of what's going on. Following the right people, you can click on a new link. 
see a little bit more of what's happening. The scary thing is that what he explained now, some bosses think he's slacking off, like he's not doing his job. But we believe that, you know, a couple of minutes spent on Twitter following the right people, because I can pretty much guarantee you that the thought leaders of all the industries that you guys are interested in, at least some of them, are on Twitter. And they're giving away great stuff for free. So basically what we're setting up here is, you know what, you don't even have to have Twitter yourself. If someone doesn't know how to use it, doesn't want to, set up a huge Twingly channel, a wall feed of, you know, some important hashtags, maybe some important people, just to get the conversation started. What's great about this is it's the 21st century water cooler. So you walked into your office and you're like, wow, that's a great idea. Wait, I'll just check out that link. You check it out and you're like, what a great idea. And then you, you come up to your coworker and you're like, that was a really good link, right? And they start forming a conversation. They start forming a conversation at, wow, why don't we do that here? Why can't this be like that? These people have it so well down. So in order to set up a learn-to-learn -learn environment, we feel that this is the first step you should do. It's a base, it's a foundation to get inspired, just to see what's going on, maybe to push yourself a bit in the right direction. So we go on to step two. Do cool shit. And do it every day. This is just to get all the bad stuff out of you, to develop. You could, for example, write a line of poetry once a day. You could take photos once a day for the whole year. The thing is, is that it's so easy to put stuff up online these days. It's a click away on your mobile phone. It's a click away on your laptop if you want to think of it that way too. Well, but say that you're, you're in marketing maybe and you say, why should I take a picture every day? It makes no sense at all. Well, if you start doing it, you're going to take crap photos for the first maybe 100 days. But say that you do it every day for a year, by the end of that year, you could probably call yourself a photographer. And more important, you would know what separates a good picture from a bad picture. So when you have your agency coming up to you and say, oh, what, you, do we, should we run this ad? And you say, no, the composition is off. You maybe felt that something was off before, but you couldn't say what. And an interesting thing about this, IDEO, which is a design innovation company, uh, when they are looking to hire new talent, they look at I and T people, is what they call it. So T people, who they want, are people who have a line of expertise, but they have also interest and a bit of knowledge about everything. They're excited about things all over the board. And then there's I people, who they call gurus. They are super good experts, but they're only interested in one thing. And if you want to inno innovate, who would you rather bounce around ideas with, the I or the T people? So this also brings up another interesting aspect that can be very beneficial to companies. And that is the fact that you can test often, but test a little. It's a little bit like Google's philosophy that put out a beta, put out often, and you get a great product. There is this website uh, on the internet, funny that, um, and it's called Dribble. It is where, it's a graphic, graphic design community. So you can put out that menu that you've been working on for the last couple of weeks. Is this the right color? Is this button big enough? Do you see it? So you get these great answers for pretty much nothing. And the, important of, uh, the importance of this is that you become unafraid. You can just say, I did this, take a look at it. I did this, take a look at it. It's not something you've been working on for months. It's maybe something you spent an hour working on. And all of a sudden, you are ready to adapt. You can take feedback much easier. You won't get you know, passive, passive aggressive. But you will start to evolve instead. The more you do it, the less scary it becomes. But enough talking let's from us. Let's look detergent. at this instead. Let's say you're Unilever, and you want to make detergent in a factory near Liverpool. How do you do it? Well, you have this great big tank full of liquid detergent. You pump it at a high pressure through a nozzle. You create a spray of detergent. Then the spray dries, it turns into powder, it falls to the floor, you scoop it up, you put it in cardboard boxes, you sell it at a supermarket, you make lots of money. How do you design that nozzle? Turns out to be very important. Now, if you ascribe to the God complex, what you do is you find yourself a little God. 
You find yourself a mathematician, you find yourself a physicist, somebody who understands the dynamics of this fluid, and uh, he will or she will calculate the optimal design of the nozzle. Now, Unilever did this, and it didn't work. Too complicated. Even this problem, too complicated. But the geneticist, Professor Steve Jones, describes how Unilever actually did solve this problem. Trial and error, variation and selection. You take a nozzle, and you create 10 random variations on the nozzle. You try out all 10. You keep the one that works best. You create 10 variations on that one. You try out all 10. You keep the one that works best. You try out 10 variations on that one. You see how this works, right? And after 45 generations, you have this incredible nozzle, looks a bit like a chess piece, functions absolutely brilliantly. We have no idea why it works. No idea at all. But the moment you step back from the God complex and you say, let's just try a bunch of stuff, let's have a systematic way of determining what's working and what's not, you can solve your problem. So how is this learn to learn? Well, if you start exploring different things, learning different things, then you will be able to adapt. It won't feel as scary when something new drops in, right? Because you're on it for every step of the way. If you would show someone who invented the feather pen a Wacom tablet today, that person would freak out, OK? But if you show them the, pen, uh, the feather pen, the regular pen, the ink, a computer, then it wouldn't be so bad, right? So that was Tim Harford, and he talked, uh, he talked about a very important thing, and that is to try. Try and fail, and try again, and fail again, and try again, and fail again, and so forth. But however, we think you should rent France or buy New Zealand. Yeah, this is step number three. We call it Think Big. Uh, there's this technology company named uh, Google. Yeah, big surprise, two tech guys talking about Google. Uh, but anyway, they actually had these two as a suggestion for how to move Google forward. Either they rent France in order to change some laws that are more Google friendly so they can push the new things they want, or they buy New Zealand. Then they own the whole company. And if they also own New Zealand, they could put all their servers there because the air is so clean that they wouldn't have to clean them anymore. And they would actually save millions of dollars by buying it. I'm from New Zealand. I was against <laughs> this to begin with, but then, like, that just makes sense, you know? Yeah. It's, it's somewhere down to the right, I think. Right? This, other com this company that we are quite fond of actually has another thing that we're going to share with you today. Um, once a week, they let their employees do whatever they like. This sounds scary. It's like it's a lot of money. But the thing is, these employees get great inspiration. They do what they are most passionate about. They are much happier at work. The benefit of this was the fact that they might create your next big product. Has anyone heard of Gmail? Could be, uh, yeah could be a good investment for the company to actually let your employees decide more what they want to do and how they would like to run the company. What we're saying is, since we're still talking about the future of communication, that if you don't think big, then you're definitely... Remember the thing, you know, anything believable will be wrong, or er, then you have to think crazy, you have to think big if you want to be at the forefront. What sounded crazy, you know, five years ago is probably everyday life today. If you don't do it, someone else will. It's Oof. as simple as that. Ooh. Harsh. Ooh. Disruption! Whoa! Ooh. Shaken, not stirred. Yeah. It's a very gr good way to break your patterns. <laughs> to, 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 like, you're looking at your screen, bored as hell. You can't think of anything that could be better. You can't figure out how to solve this problem. You need to shake things up a bit. You need to do something different, right? Uh, at Hyper Island, we love energizers. Uh, you guys saw the banana energizer? Yeah. That's what we like to do to connect body and mind, just to get us going, get us thinking, doing something different. You know, so maybe we even just, we start jumping, right? And we start throwing our arms in the air. Yeah, and we wave our legs. And we... Uh, this is another important point that in a company, you can't drop the ball. If someone starts thinking 
about a crazy idea and you don't see why they're thinking about it or like, ah, oh, that's, that's not going to be possible. No, we want to force you to build off each other. Always say, yes, and we can also do this. Yes, and we add this on top. Because what happened there is, yes, we were looking silly, but we were building off each other. So instead of going around in our old circular path, we broke off right here, and we were off to something new. Right? That could lead to something great. Could lead just to a little bit of fun. And I mean, if you don't want to play at your office, well, ugh, you're going to get stuck at your office. Because that time spent trying to come up with the next great idea, staring into the wall, could have been fixed by just doing something different. So that was our learning. Just <laughs> do something different. Wow, sounds so deep when you say it. I yeah. know, thanks. OK, step number five. Sharing is caring. Open source yourself. Uh, we have found that a lot of companies are afraid of free stuff. It's scary when stuff is for free. We believe that it might even drive you forward, that you would have to innovate somehow in order to do something new. We also have an idea of how you might do this. Uh, this is more internal, sharing is caring. So once a week, one of your employees, they get the job of creating a presentation, a 30-minute presentation. It's not long, but they do it about something they're passionate about, something that could be related to the daily affair that you're running. And then they present it to the rest of the coworkers. The best thing with this is the fact that you might inspire your friends. You might inspire your coworkers. You might build off something to create a new idea, a new direction for your company. You will definitely get to know them better, something that they are passionate about. At Hyper, we do this uh, a bit different. We do five-minute sharing. You get to come up, you say something that you are super excited about, show it off a bit for five minutes, then it's next person's turn. And this also drives a bit of friendly competition into learn to learn. Because when Richard is showing such awesome stuff, next week I want to trump him. I want to do him one better. So I'm digging through stuff, I'm trying to find something cool. You know, I'm going through all this information just because I feel a little inspired, a little competitive. I want to win, you know? I can, rest I, can rest I can guarantee that he has never done anything better than I have. So just in case you're wondering that. So what we're trying to say, really, the learn to learn in this is the fact that if you just give a little, you'll get a lot back. Yeah. But now we're going to go through a little yeah. summary. Quick recap. Um, we have the tweet spiration, the foundation, staying up to date, you know, having something inspiring to talk about, not just what was on TV last night. Maybe talk about, you know, some new crazy stuff that's been going on within your field of business. Do some cool shit. Yep, always good. Uh, I read it recently, today, I think, how much time is wasted every day. It'd be fun if you actually got something out of the end of that. Yeah, do something. Your, your teeth form could just like a bit out to the side. If you do a bit every day, you know, it might be slow, but soon enough you'll become a beautiful tea. Rent France, think big. Be a bit crazy. Yeah. Disruption, as you all know. <laughs> Yell at the top of your lungs at a conference. Yeah. yeah, just something different. And of course, sharing is caring, as we are doing today. So if you implement these things uh, into your workspace or into your personal life, we feel that you will think that the future is actually quite fun and quite interesting and quite awesome, to be frank. Definitely. And you probably find things out about yourself that you don't even know. Or maybe find the absolute new passion that was something completely off base from what you started at. So we would like today to do with you a little learn to learn, a little sharing, a little caring. Yeah, so we started up this hashtag, uh, learn to learn. If you guys could add on something that inspires you or something that you do already in order to, you know, learn to learn, to stay updated, then please uh, share with us. We think it would be so cool if we could gather a pool of knowledge right there. It can be whatever random link you want. And we've, we've put a few little things up there, and we will be putting up this presentation with the links to the films we've shown you. If you would like to follow us, uh, our Twitter handles are there, Richard Harris and Patrick Littell. Yes, uh, if you're 
New York office are looking for interns, straight to this guy. Not interested, <laughs> that guy, no. Um, yeah. That is it. Uh, we made it. Thanks. Hey, whoa. whoa. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Oh, there oh, you go. Thank you. Thank you. There was thank a discussion on, uh, on Twitter where you guys are from. <laughs> uh, I already yeah. exposed that. That was New Zealand. <laughs> uh, New Zealand, which yes. is sold to uh, Google? Not yet, Not thankfully. Yet. Okay, uh, but soon. Yeah, you might be meddling in that. Uh, yeah. yeah. No. I am from Stockholm, Sweden. Half American, proud of it as well. So okay. go both, Great. I guess. Cool. Um, I and mean, I'm going to change the rules now. Uh, ni fattar lite svenska, eller hur va? Ja, ja, jag är faktiskt fråga, bättre fråga på, på svenska. Fråga på svenska går jättebra om det är Precis. någon som har... Nu tänkte jag faktiskt ändra reglerna, för det tycker jag ibland är bra. Och då tänkte jag be expertpanelen vara experter och tycka till om det här. Inga frågor, utan nu får ni säga vad tyckte ni om det här. En åsikt. <laughs> jag, har, jag har inte förberett dem alls på det här. Pingis, vad tycker du? You guys are really hyper. <laughs> uh, I'm just curious of... of um, how... If, if you become a student and you're graduating uh, in 2012, How has this changed you, and, and how will you use this kind of knowledge, your, your graduation going forward in life? Uh, it, it has changed me in the fact that I thought, uh, oh, that's weird, uh, about, you know, I have to know all these things about front-end development. That, that's my goal, right? But no. I kind of took a slide towards more, how do you work in a group, how important it is, and you know, step down from being, like Tim Hartford said, my own little god uh, in my own little space. So now I'm just trying to broaden my view and, and you know, do my best, I guess. Linda, what do you think about this? I thought it was very cool. A nice presentation. Thank you. So, yeah, fantastic. Good. Our goal was, if we didn't have any other slides, we would have put them up. John, what do you think? Less is more when it comes to slides. Bra. Tack. Har vi några frågor, Miriam, på Twitter? Det är inga direkta frågor, men en del feedback. Eh, och eh, snyggt retoriskt grepp där med att skrika, tycker jag. Eh. Ja, vi får kolla. <laughs> Okej, okay, vi ger dem all vår kärlek genom en stor varm applåd.